Hi, I'm Dan Carter Passy. Welcome to Dan's Back Shop. Before we get to what's on the workbench, I got a few other things I'd want to talk about, so let's get started. So I got an email from a viewer named Corey Burrell, and I hope I'm saying his name right. Uh, he sounds like he's, a, he's deaf and um, has some other challenges. And he has a dream of wanting to drive a real locomotive. And in order to realize that dream, he set up a GoFundMe page uh, to try to raise some money so he can do that. So I uh, told him I'd pass along the link. Um, so I put it in the description down below. And uh, if anybody is uh, willing or able to uh, you know, donate anything to help him realize his dream, I'm sure he'd really appreciate it. So good luck, Corey. So I've been talking about downsizing my project list. And in order to do that, I've been selling off some models. And so I've been uh, using eBay to do that. And um, I recently discovered that you can put posts on the YouTube channel as well as videos. So I've been posting uh, on the channel what I've been selling. I know some people have seen that already, but um, in case you haven't, you can look for it. And if you're subscribed or if you want to subscribe and you hit the little bell icon for notifications, I'm pretty sure that will also let you know when I do a post. I will typically post on the channel like Tuesday or Wednesday. Usually I will start the auctions themselves on Tuesday and they end on Sunday. Uh, I don't always get to the posts on that same day, but uh, I try to get to them fairly soon after I put up the auctions. Um, anyway, and assuming the people pay right away, uh, like on the Sunday when the auction ends, I will ship on the following Monday, typically, unless it's a holiday. So, um, you know, I, that way everybody gets the models as quickly as possible and, I, you know, I, everybody's happy. So um, a lot of the models are either models that I've bought for projects that I've decided I don't need to do, or they're models that I bought to review that, uh, you know, basically I took out of the box, reviewed them, and then put them away. So they're like new. Um, if anything isn't, you know, if there's anything that's a, a kit or, a, you know, some assembly required, or this isn't working, I'm selling it for parts, I will tell you that in the description. I try to be as accurate as possible, uh, you know, with that kind of thing. So anyway, um, if anybody's interested in this, uh, any of this stuff, I'd like to see the models go to people who would actually enjoy them. Um, and I think that would be really cool. So, you know, thanks for checking it out. So I wanted to do a little follow-up on the Broadway Limited HO Scale 4449 model that I reviewed recently. Um, I want to thank several viewers for pointing this out, um, but the hatch on the top of the Skyline casing actually comes off, which I didn't realize when I did the review. So you can just pry it up with your fingernails and it has a little magnet and a little pin that kind of hold it in place. And you can just uh, pull it off or, or move it out of the way. And inside there's a little tiny switch that turns off the smoke unit. Um, I know I was talking about that and uh, saying that I couldn't find a switch. Well, that's where it is. So uh, you might need to use a small jeweler's screwdriver or a toothpick or something to actually throw the switch because it's so small, but it is there, which is nice to know. The other thing that I was pleased to see is that the boiler face on that model uh, pulls off. It's not glued in, it's just a press fit. And that would make it easier to change the upper headlight to a dual headlight arrangement um, that would be more correct for the years that my model is supposed to represent, 1981 to 2000. Um, so it could probably be done just by um, maybe replacing that upper lens with uh, a different lens and maybe some fiber optics to simulate the two smaller lights inside the larger opening. So um, I don't think you'd need to touch the LEDs. The LEDs themselves are mounted inside the smoke box. So I think doing that would actually be a much simpler proposition than I was originally thinking it might be. So I was glad to find that. So I was recently sent a box of stuff by a viewer named David. Um, his father was an HO scale prototype modeler who unfortunately passed away. Um, and David was trying to uh, find new homes for the models and some of the detail parts. So um, we had a very long uh, back and forth conversation over a period of several months. Um, you know, and I was interested in a couple of the models and maybe some of the detail parts. And I was trying to figure out how to, you know, buy them from them and stuff like that. But in the end, he ended up just sending me uh, some stuff. So uh, with the day it arrived, uh, Nicole was nice enough to, uh, you know, take a video of that. So let's take a look. So this is a box sent to me by someone named David. I'm not really sure what's in it. So let's take a look. Ooh, exciting. Oh, very 
a good job packing. Oh my goodness, this is so cool. Oh, detail Whoa. parts. Whoa, and a whole switcher body. Holy cow. Look at that. Look at all oh, this This is stuff. cool. These are, these are like cannon parts and details west. and That is really neat. Whoa. That is so much cool stuff. Shout out to David. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And then, what is this? More oh my oh, handrail goodness. kits? You can't even get these anymore. That's really cool. This is amazing. Lots of detail parts, handrail sets. Looks like a lot of handrails. Wow. Um, it's in here. Yeah, lots of lots of handrails. Wow, that is really cool. This could rival your set of stuff. My goodness. I know. I'm gonna have to. No, I feel like things are about to explode. And decals. Look at all these. Wow. wow. That's why it's so heavy. Oh, and a shell. Look at that. Locomotive shell. And another one. Wow. It looks like a U-boat maybe, a C30-7. This is a GP35. And what's this? An SD40-2. Cool. Very cool. Oh, there's a little something down there. A little. Oh, it's a little truck. It's a little truck. Oh, that's cool. Oh, it's so cute. Yeah, a little Ford, old-time Ford truck. That's neat. Yay, something for it on the property and finally. Some, some people. Is that Santa? Does it have Santa in it? Oh, oh no, I think it's a I think it's actually supposed to be a lady with ice skates. Really? Well but, we're gonna totally use that in the in the Christmas layout. village. Yeah, in the Christmas village for yeah. sure. And some wire lights. Wow. Goodness, David, thank you so much. Yeah, oh, this another, is an insane amount of money. Yeah, this is um, he said he was going to send me a couple of things, but this is a lot. I didn't know it was this much. There's so much. Oh. I mean, I don't even use any of this stuff, and I'm like, wow. There's some, oh, oh there's some, like, plastic. Here. And lots of microscale decals. Wow. Just, wow. That's a, lots and lots of microscale. More detail parts, it looks like. And some wheels. This is going to take you forever to go through and catalog to all I know. stuff. Oh, and another little, another oh, truck. another truck! That's cool, another yes. truck. Yes. Wow, this is a lot of stuff. I didn't expect all of this at all. Wow. This is so cool. Wait, nice. there's something in here that's wrapped. It's another, oh, another body. another locomotive shell. Yeah, and another little, oh, that's cool. like, and extra and pieces. And this is so crazy. David, if these are your extras, I don't even want to know what your train room looks like, <laughs> sir. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at and what some, I just found. And some models as well. Look at what I just found hidden underneath all this deliciousness. More decals. Right? Boy, there's a lot. There's more decals than I had. And there's more wow. bins of parts. Wow, look at that. And these, what are these? These are like... Oh, he's got them all numbered out. Yeah. They're all That's so they're cool. all they're they're numbered for like specific things. I wonder what they are. Oh that's oh okay. Those are like little bags of detail parts. Maybe they came with models. Yeah. And a wow. cradle weight for a motor. Wow, this is a lot of stuff. I mean, it looks like some actual models in here, too. There we go. Oh, An SPGP35, that's neat. And the Kodachrome scheme. Oh, yeah, look at that. That is super pretty. I was not expecting that. Well, why would you be expecting that? These are so cool. Uh, Western Pacific. It's a Western Pacific. Oh, nice. GP35. Very My cool. goodness, orange and reds. There's still two more down there, too. Yeah. This is like a Christmas box for you, yeah. Daniel. Oh, it kind of matches this one. Yeah. The tunnel yeah. motor and the, um, and the Kodachrome scheme unnumbered, so that means I can pick whatever number I want for it. Oh, nice. And probably have some decals in here that would work for it. That would work for it. Yeah, what's this one? Oh, this is a Ooh. this is an SD50, I believe. Yeah, 
and then uh, X Rio Grande SP Paint. Nice. So very cool. Goodness, so so many amazing things yeah. down there. That uh, that was super super generous. Thank you so much. I mean, that was way more than I was expecting. Um, he said he was going to send me a couple things. It was like way more than. That. <laughs> way more than that. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> I knew when we picked up the box and it was so heavy, it was going to be more than that. But I didn't know it was going to be that much more than that. Like, yeah, wow. That's really cool. David, that's amazing and super sweet and kind. Thank you so much. Yeah. So we'll have to be, uh, you know, sure these, some of these will be uh, appearing on the channel eventually for our various things. Yes. And on the layout when it gets built. So Definitely. Very cool. Thank you so much. So I just, uh, David, thanks again. Uh, um, you know, m my condolences for the loss of your father. Um, and I really appreciate all of this stuff. Um, there's a lot here. I've been going through it and trying to integrate a lot of the detail parts with my own stash of detail parts, um, which has been a bit of an undertaking, but I'm, I'm getting there. Um, also, there are some parts uh, for different things in here that are for models I don't have or may not use. So um, I may, uh, if I can, pass some of them along to other modelers who will use them because I feel like these really should go to somebody who's going to take advantage of them. So there's definitely a lot, of, a lot of stuff in there that I will use, though. Like, I don't think I'll ever have to buy another rooftop beacon again. Um, <laughs> there's a, quite a stash of those. Um, you know, and those were really common on a lot of SP engines in the 90s. So uh, that that's great, you know, having all of that. So, um, you know, I'm really, really, uh, you know, appreciative of everything that was sent. Um, it was way more than I expected. So thanks again. So earlier I was talking about integrating the detail parts that I got um, with my own stash of detail parts. And even before that happened, uh, I was running out of space in the little cardboard box that I'd been using. So I don't know if I mentioned these before, but I bought these uh, cases at a hardware store. These are by Milwaukee. But I like these because they have little bins that come out and they're tall enough inside to fit the little detail part cards that you get like in the hobby shop. So I've got a kind of got them broken out and then instead of having one cardboard box, now I've got like five or six of these things. Um, so I'm still getting used to it because, um, you know, trying to find stuff is still a little bit hard. But I have tried to organize it, you know, somewhat like, you know, these are, what is this? Little access cover, sand filler covers. Yeah, so there's like, I've, I've tried to group like parts together in different bins so that I can find stuff relatively easily. And some of the bins are larger, which is kind of nice. So that, you know, for stuff that doesn't fit in the small bins, you can use one of the larger ones. Um, I also have this, which is similar, but um, this one has a little tray in the middle, which is kind of cool. Like if you have some really long stuff, like this is a, what's that? It's a tread, uh, safety tread and steps for uh, a GP38 or GP40-2. So Canon part doesn't really fit in the littler bins and I don't want to bend it. So having this long tray is kind of nice for stuff like that. And then it's got a couple of these larger bins for, for some other things. So these have been really cool. I just have to get used to them. So one day I walked out to my mailbox and I found a box out there and it was full of trains. <laughs> so these are from uh, some more models from Mike's Trains, which is a hobby shop in North Carolina. They sent me these cars to be reviewed. So these will be coming up in the near future on the channel. Um, there's an Atlas boxcar and an Athern boxcar, Western Pacific, and an Intermountain boxcar, Grand Trunk, and a Walther's auto rack. So those will be coming up uh, hopefully in the next couple of months. So this model was on the workbench last time. This is an Atheron SD70M. Um, it does, however, have new brass handrails on the sides, which is something that it didn't have before. And uh, this model is going to be part of the next handrail video, which is going to be part two of the handrails. And also it's part of the Consist build series, even though this isn't one of the original Consist build models. Anyway, I thought including some other models would be a good thing since um, you know, there's similar techniques, but some different parts. Like this is an EMD engine, so I'm using uh, precision scale EMD stanchions on this one. And I also had to build a custom stanchion for this extra tall one over here. 
So I talk about all that on the video. I'm also including this GP15-1, which has also been on the show before, been on the workbench for a while, but I built some new end handrails for it. So I talk about how to do that and I'll also be building some side handrails for it. Um, got the wires already bent for that, but I need to uh, do the soldering with the stanchions. So this is another engine that's been on the workbench for quite a while. It's a cotton belt GP35R. You probably may remember seeing it before. This one already has its end handrails, but I've bent up the side handrails, and again, I just need to uh, solder all the stanchions on to finish those. Um, this engine is actually very close to being ready for paint, and since uh, the B30-7 in the build is also getting close to being ready for paint, I was thinking I might leave this one in the series for a while while I paint it, since they're both cotton belt engines. So this is a Kato-9, and it's been on the show before too. Um, I'm working on the side handrails for this one as well. Techniques are pretty similar to uh, the B30-7 that's actually part of the Consist build. Um, but what I did on this one, since the Kato stanchions have really big holes in the sill, um, I filled those in with little plastic plugs and then um, drilled new smaller holes because the KV stanchions that I want to use have uh, smaller pins. So I don't remember if I've had this one on the show before. Um, this one has been hanging around in my workbench area for quite a while also. This is a Proto 2000 GP9 that I'm detailing and, and going to paint as Cotton Belt 3873, which is um, kind of a cool engine because it's, it's one that's been preserved. It's painted right now in, uh, in Black Widow colors as a Southern Pacific engine, but it's, it was originally a Cotton Belt engine. So I'm actually modeling it um, as it would have appeared in the 90s in Cotton Belt paint. So I've done a lot of work on the rear end of this one, actually both ends. Um, filling in the number boards and adding wire grab irons and doing some work on the pilots and such. I also put some little, uh, made some little styrene rings um, out of strip styrene to go inside the fan openings because they're actually a little too large for the Canon fans that I want to use on it. So um, this makes it just small enough that they'll fit. I also added this little plate here from some 10,000 styrene. Um, I'm not sure what it is, but it appears in a lot of photos of GP7s and GP9s. And the battery access doors on this unit are custom fabricated from two different pieces. And the, the real one actually did have a seam going down the center like that. So I tried to reproduce that. So I think I took the upper door from one part and the lower door from one part and spliced them together. So this is an N-scale Bachmann consolidation that I just recently did some work on. I made a video about it um, where I re-gauged some of the drivers because they were narrow in gauge. And I also added a working coupler to the front end. So this thing just needs a little bit of paint touch up here and there and it'll be good to go. So that's about it for now. If you like this video, then please like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really helps. Stay tuned and thanks for watching.